Um, what, what, what's the story? What, what, have you got any uh, news, news or announcements or uh, how's things going? How are the metrics going? Yeah, yeah so I think um, no. we're, we're three days in to the protocol. Um, and uh, it, people were patiently and unpatiently awaiting the launch of that thing for um, it, 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 the delivery of that took uh, longer than expected. There, there were delays as we worked through some uh, some challenges, both with uh, fetch as well as um, you know some some gas spike issues that that are kind of uh, quite frequent on pulse chain. Yeah. And now finally, we delivered, right? And I, I, we think it was uh, perfect timing. We didn't time the market, by the way, but the stars aligned just right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, Richard came in afterwards and started pumping Pulse X, which was kind of cool. Um, the metrics now, three days in, <clears throat> there's just under $60 million for the Pulse X locked up into those vaults. That's 776 billion Pulse X, 805 vaults open, and the uh, stablecoin supply is at 18.3 million stablecoins, PXCC stablecoins. So you've got essentially. 18.3 million stable coins backed by 60 million dollars worth of value so it's it's a over collateralized uh, system it's it's extremely healthy right now 326 percent um average collateral health and um the yields and the various pools which we have many of are doing uh quite well there's the stability pool um which is i don't know what it is currently it, it, it's probably somewhere around two or three hundred percent uh, APR right now. Yeah. Uh, the the fee collection pool by staking earn tokens is doing well. We've got two different liquidity pools incentivized at the moment. With a third one that will turn on uh, approximately next week over on PHUX. Um, and uh, doing well, doing well. Yeah. Terms of community really enjoys it. Awesome! Awesome! So yeah, that's that's what I was going to ask you. Um, uh, what, what's what's the response been so far from community? Like I know there's been a, there's been a, a few uh, a few uh, issues going on with uh, the oracles and stuff like that. With uh, as far as redemptions and how that's going to work going going forward. I want to, if you wanted to get into a bit of detail and get some clarity around yeah. that. Um, that's probably what um, uh, a lot of people are sort of talking about and going. Okay, well you know how's we can see what you know liquid loans have had what they're doing and then and obviously we've got your approach so. I think there's a distinction there to be made. Um, yes, sure. I... so, so first and foremost, everyone needs to understand that redemptions are necessary. Um, it, it, those are what keep the peg of the stable coin. That's the arbitrage where if, if somebody's dumping an ERC-20, a DEX doesn't know that it's supposed to be a stable coin, right? So if somebody, if somebody sells a whole bunch of uh, PXDC, the value of that PXCC on any particular DEX is going to change, and it's going to change from a dollar to ninety-eight cents or ninety-seven cents or something. And what what's the incentive to drive that back up to a dollar? Well, it's because it's redeemable. Mm -hmm. So uh, people come in, they buy it, they buy the spread back up to a dollar, and then they redeem it in the protocol for a dollar. Now, <clears throat> there's two ways to, and so that is necessary. That always has to be available. But there's two ways, there's, well, there's a nefarious kind of uh, redemption. We'll talk about that in a minute. How do you minimize redemptions? Um, well, you pair stable coins together, a whole bunch of them. So if you've ever heard of Curve, Curve is designed for this very reason, where um, you go and you find USDC paired to USDT and, and die and all that. Uh, 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 LUSD and all these stable coins that are on ETH, they're all paired together in these big pools over in Curve. So now when you do that, what you find is when one stable coin falls in value, people simply buy that with the other stable coins and they all start balancing each other out. The, the act of pairing various stable coins together presents a second arbitrage opportunity which minimizes the redemptions back into each respective protocol. So we're gonna you're gonna see a big strong push. Um, we've created a pool already over in PHUX. We paired um, USDL PXDC, DAI, USDT, and USDC all together, right? Those pools will be incentivized 
Um, and you'll hear some narratives come out of that, and we, we hope the community starts participating and voting to direct uh, um, some uh, PHUX emissions to those pools, because that's that's really going to create a really healthy ecosystem of stables um, and, and cut down on redemptions. And people are going to make fees along the way. It, if you're pairing stables together, your risk of impermanent loss is uh, minimal to none. But yeah, you yeah. have an opportunity to to make a whole bunch of trading fees because there's always tons of volume uh, going back and forth between stables, um, and then also the emissions of the tokens themselves, the reward token that you're getting. So yeah. um, that's that's our approach to cutting down on the normal redemptions that occur and creating yeah. a second arbitrage opportunity. Now, there's a nefarious type of um, um, uh, redemption that occurs as well. <laughs> And it's not all that common, but when, um, uh, let's say a chain pumps really, really fast, like we saw the other day, yeah, you see exactly. somebody come in with like $14 million and they just pump something 60%. Mm -hmm. in, in each protocol, whether it's, you know, let's say earn protocol, if the, the price of the protocol is delayed by the spot price by too far, there's a difference in price there that makes an opportunity for people to actually redeem because then they, they'll get the pulse X and they'll go and they'll sell, sell that back into the market for a stable coin or whatever. Um, and, and that's what you need to try and minimize. So what we did is we've been analyzing that for a couple months now. This was an awesome opportunity to look at, uh, um, look at it happen in real time. And we've cut down um, the the window, the window of opportunity to just about as small as we can possibly make it. All right. Now, yeah, see, I got a question for you when you're done. Yep. Yeah. Now, this isn't going to prevent all redemptions from happening because remember, at any time, people mm -hmm. can redeem. It's yeah, part it's of the system. You can't turn it off. But what you can do is just shrink down that window of opportunity to um, getting your ingested price as close to the spot as possible. We think we've done um, our part to make that, to, to do that. Um, so, you know, elsewhere you may have seen 15 or 30 minute windows or whatever. You're going to see much, much, much shorter windows of opportunity um, in our protocol. Yeah, I, I, I can say I can say that. Sorry, Dan. I just want to say uh, I can say that um, the to offset what's happening naturally in the way the, the protocol functions, that the the, the stable coins arbitraging between themselves, uh, having an incentive to, uh, for for people to participate in that, is it's going to help uh, keep keep that peg. Um, yep. Now you, you you mentioned that you're hoping for, for community support around uh, doing that. Um, have you got have you got some outreach happening there already? Um, like, can you sort of announce to people um, it's coming, or, or how can they get involved in doing that? Because I can I can appreciate exactly how important that is. Yeah. Well, currently we have two pools that are incentivized, and they're emitting earn tokens out, uh, and they're on PulseX, right? So there's a PulseX paired to PXDC pool, and when you participate in that and you stake those LP tokens, you get an emission of earn tokens. We also recognize that um, we wanted to see some deeper, thicker liquidity for the actual earn token itself. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, it's like, well... People like, and especially in the Hex community, they like to stake something to get more of the same thing. So we said, well, mm -hmm. let's just incentivize earn token paired back to PXTC, and it'll emit out earn tokens to those same people. So you can mm -hmm. you can help you earn and get more earn. Now, that doesn't last forever. That lasts for 42 days. But that's plenty of time for us to uh, fire up the PHUX pools, which will continue on emissions for eternity. Right? Yeah. So... Um, one of those is already on. It takes uh, about a week for the voting uh, thing to, to kick on to start emitting um, PHUX tokens out to that pool. So, yeah. so that'll come yeah. out maybe sometime next week. Um, and I, I fully suspect the people that are LPing now and they're enjoying the rewards of rune tokens will simply migrate some of their liquidity or all of it or whatever o over to PHUX where they'll also be... Uh, you know, they'll, they'll continue earning things. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Ben, go ahead. You had a question for Jesse? 
Yeah, Jesse. So for the average person who's maybe not familiar with um, this, the, these loan program or loan protocols and um, yeah, so what would be the, the simplest and safest way that they could get involved? What would you recommend that they start? You know, there's people who listening who they've never done this before. It's been out in the community, but they want to, you know, get involved in, you know, see where the opportunity is. So where would you suggest starting? Where's the, the simplest and safest play? Well, there's there's three things that you can do inside of the protocol itself. One is take a loan out, right? So you lock up Pulse X and you take a loan out. Um, it, that's probably while the, you can set your collateral house wherever you want to. You know, it's probably the riskiest thing you could do. It takes a little bit more understanding to under, to figure out where uh, how much pulse X to put for how much uh, PXDC you want to mint. So for somebody who's brand new and you just want to poke around in the system, I would say uh, try try two things. Just purchase a little bit of PXCC off the open market, whether it's like 10 bucks worth or whatever. It doesn't matter, right? Bring that in and deposit it into the stability pool and just watch how that works. You just simply deposit it and you start earning an emission of earned tokens. If there's ever a liquidation, a tiny piece of your um, USDL is going to burn and you're going to pick up PulseX in its place, actually a 10% valuation higher than the amount of PXCC that burned. It's not going to be your whole bag or anything. And you can do whatever you want with that. You can swap it back to, to more stables and, or, or whatever you want. But that's a relatively safe thing to do because all you're doing is depositing a stable coin into the stability pool and you're earning some emissions. Mm -hmm. The other thing you could try out is take some of those emissions or purchase some earn token on the open market and go um, deposit those into the staking pool. And anytime somebody takes a loan, you're going to be collecting um, PXVC. And when redemptions turn on, you're going to be collecting PulseX as well. So there's two things that you collect over in the staking pool, PXVC and PulseX. Try those two pools out, the stability pool and the staking pool. Uh, it's, it's really easy. Um, we got lots of videos to show you how to do all this. Um, and then while you're doing that, figure out how the loan side of things work. And maybe you participate in that part or maybe you don't. Well, that brings up a good question. What's a, a safe collateral uh, uh, rate then? You know, that's kind of been uh, talked about in the community. So would you even want to touch on that? Because that's that's pretty important. Yep. So I... You know, for me, and maybe some other uh, founders may have their their targets that they suggest um, suggest. I, th I think I think we tend to lean towards. Um, we like to see people with safe collateral health, but we can't define what that number is for you because there's so many strategies that you can do. Um, let me give you an example. Well, one person may choose that a thousand percent collateral health is healthy because it's so hard to get liquidated when you're at a thousand percent collateral. You're, the value of what you put in would have to drop by eighty, you know, eighty nine or whatever percent um, for you to lose your pulse X. Uh, your pulse X would have to drop by that value for you to lose it, um, and, and you can fully manage it along the way. While some may consider that safe, on the other hand, the, the people who are not taking a thousand percent collateral health and they're hovering around two or three hundred, they've put all that value to work for them. They've minted more stable coins than the other guy was able to, and they're earning a whole bunch of money um, along the way. So which one's safer? The one who, um, you know, if he just hung out and it did drop 89%, he's only got 10% of his value left for him, and he wasn't putting any of that to work for him? Or what about the guy the other day that rode the pump up after RH pumped the chain, and, and he took 100, he moved his loan to 110% collateral health as a stop loss, and when that thing retraced to 30 or 40%, he got stopped out. And he then bought back in at like 30% uh, cheaper, 30%. right? It was, yeah, 30%. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 
So there, there's so many different ways to use this. You can use it as a stop loss. You can use it to, to, to simply take a small loan because you need some value out and you don't really want to sell your pulse X or maybe you do want like 500% collateral health or more. It, it You are going to have to make that decision for yourself. Yeah. I think, uh, I think, uh, when you, when you have like 200% collateralization, um, you just got yourself a babysitting job in my mind. When I want to look at that sort of collateral, um, sort of, uh, ratio, um, you, you have to monitor it. You have to have, um, um, stable coins on the side, uh, all, all that sort of stuff, um, to be anywhere near that sort of collateral ratio. Um, in my mind anyway, I, I'm, I'm probably more the person that will way over collateralized because I, I want to periodically come back and check and not have to worry about, um, you know, the, Redemptions and liquidations, yeah. Right. Let's talk about redemptions also for a second, right? So it, the interesting thing that um, may be happening elsewhere is, is people keep climbing their um, uh, collateral health higher and higher and higher, right? They, they're trying to avoid liquidations. The problem is everybody's doing it, so nothing actually changes at all. Yeah. Right. So if, if there's five people in the system and they're all just leapfrogging each other higher and higher, um, it still goes in order from the lowest fall to the highest, regardless of what the lowest is. The lowest could be 110. It could be the lowest might be 600. And there may be a delayed reaction there, but everybody's still just leapfrogging each other and it gets higher and higher. That's a, a big part of that's simply education. Um, I'm not convinced that the debt in front calculator um, is helpful because then people just see it and they, it makes them want to, to get further and further away. But if everybody's doing it, it, it just <laughs> makes it worse. So yeah. while we may end up having that calculator, um, it, it, there's a huge educational piece involved here uh, to, to prevent people you know, from being too scared of the system. Here's another thing, right? Let's say you're redeemed. And in a normal redemption, you don't actually lose anything at all. Your debt is paid off by somebody else. Yeah. And proportional to that, they get the same value of Pulse X. Now, where it could do some harm to somebody is if at that same moment in time, there's a huge pump in the price of Pulse X. And then went, by the time you notice that you, you had a redemption and you're supposed to be pretty much break even and you're like, oh, well, I'd rather buy my Pulse X back with my stables, right? And you go and you buy those back, but the price of Pulse X is much higher. Okay, then you feel like you've been harmed. But you also have to consider that you were making a lot of value elsewhere. You were in the stability pool. Maybe you were earning 100% or 200% APR. You were earning a ton of earned tokens. You were staking those. You were earning more um, Pulse X. So you have to kind of add all that together and say, am I really at a loss or am I not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. E even even if you were redeemed. It's, uh, it sounds like swings and roundabouts, doesn't it? Right. Hey, let's got a question. Let are you there? Yeah, what's up, bros? Much love this year. I feel like Pulse Chain's going to be the fire this year. I'm really excited to see all the OGs building. I was just curious, Jesse, like, obviously noobs can get wrecked from being under collateralized. Can you tell us some stories of people who've done really well using your ecosystem? Like, how did they strategize to crush it using all your tools? Yeah, so when you say people get wrecked being under collateralized, they're, they're, people need to understand there's a difference between... Uh, a liquidation on an exchange and a liquidation on a protocol like this. This is not a leveraging uh, system. So so on an exchange, basically, let's say you bring in uh, a thousand bucks and you say, I'm going to lever this up uh, 10x. So your thousand bucks is now um, you know $10,000 worth of trade. But you're also 10 times more likely uh, and, and, and things move 10 times as hard, and as the price goes down, you literally can lose all your money. When you're liquidated, you not only lose that imaginary money that, you leave or, like, that you're playing with, but you lose your initial capital. It's gone. Poof. When you're liquidated. This system is kind of like inverse of that. You are putting more value into the system, backing your stable coins. And if you're liquidated, all that means is 
that your collateral is worth just slightly over the value that you've already minted in your is in your possession at that point in time. So if you minted yourself a hundred thousand stable coins, um, but you you know you've got pulsex in the system, and that pulsex becomes worth um, you know a hundred grand plus plus ten k. Uh, and, and you lose that because you you know you let that happen. You're not wrecked. You have a hundred thousand stable coins. You still have the value you would have had otherwise. Mm-hmm. But that's if um, they didn't if if they didn't put it back in there or something like that. You know, a lot of people yeah, still do that. Yeah. So that's important. There are, to ways, talk about. there are ways to to wreck yourself. So if you had taken that hundred thousand stable coins and you bought a shit coin with it that went to zero, yeah, you've got nothing to show for it. If you if you took those stable coins and you bought more pulse X and you started looping the system a bunch of times and then you were unable to pay back your loan even if you wanted to, um, and you get liquidated, you, you still have nothing to show for it. But if you did like liquidity providing stables to stables, if you put your stables in the stability pool, if you just huddled them, or if you bought something tangible that's actually worth something, like a, a car that you needed, if you're liquidated, you have something of value that you got. You're not wrecked. Yeah. That's what I was asking the question for. Like, I wanted to know, is there a way you guys kind of strategize how to like help people not get wrecked? And it sounds like you have a few strategies. Can you share some of those? Like that would, that would be really cool for me to know like, Hey, the tools are there guys. Just get your education yeah. up and yeah. you can use this. So the, the, the cool thing about this system about earn protocol is it has a built in in code enforced way to prevent the majority of people from being wrecked. So it forces the system to, as an average, stay over 150% collateral health. So if the value of Pulse X is floating around and it goes down, um, it, and let's say the total collateral health of the system gets below 150, it forces everybody in the system, the, the, the ability to draw that down further no longer is there, and the only actions that can occur in the system is people topping up their collateral health or people taking new loans at a healthier collateral that actually drives the health of the system up. So there, it already has that uh, mechanism kind of built in the code. Now, that doesn't prevent individuals um, from coming in before the total collateral health is below 150 and taking 110% or 120% uh, collateral ratio. But under normal circumstances, the people that are doing that are doing that on purpose. Every now and then you'll see somebody come in at 110% collateral health and you say, oh, look at that guy. Why is he doing that? He's going to get liquidated. And if you watch his wallet, you'll see, oh, it looks like he just wanted them the max amount of stables because he wants to go and pee him. Um, and, and he was okay with a 10% loss. He knows he's going to make that back in the first three months of LPing him or whatever. Like it, yeah. some people know what they're doing on occasion. Yeah. There's somebody who's just completely clueless, never read the white paper, never watched the video, just click buttons randomly. And maybe they lose uh, 10 bucks because that's all they had to their name anyway. And then they complain because they're wrecked. But you know, most people aren't getting wrecked. The, the system yeah. prevents that. Hey, Jesse, yeah. uh, final thoughts on this before we move on to somebody else. Um, and and also, um, you, as you know, we do these every Saturday. So uh, hopefully for the next month, you can uh, stop by and give us an update. Uh, the, this, the EARN protocol is uh, super important to Pulse Chain, and we'd uh, appreciate all the alpha. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool, cool. Um, um, so, uh, AJ, are you with us, mate? Hey, brother, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, can you hear you good, yeah. All right, awesome, sorry about that. I had some technical difficulties earlier, but yeah, man, happy to be here. Yeah, how's the weekend been so far, man? Good, brother, just uh, busy as hell, but yeah, uh, again, I'd love to drop some alpha on uh, on the show. We're, uh, we're in beta testing for our perps, uh, so we've been super busy with all that. We've had uh, some uh, VIPs, testing over the last few hours and we're hoping to hopefully open it up to public beta uh like monday so yeah it's been wow. a busy weekend <laughs> yeah so so early in the week okay fantastic so and um 
uh, you're kicking it off with uh, with B B C C and USD. Yeah, yeah totally. Then, so, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, there's a bit of a delay in the line. That's okay, mate. Go ahead. I was just, I was just saying, uh, I was just passing to you that you're, you're kicking it off with B T C. Yeah, hundred hey, percent. AJ, before you get into that, for the people that aren't familiar with SparkSwap, why don't you just tell a little bit about all the things you got going on? Mm. Give people a little backstory for the new people but that might not know everything, and then could we get into that, please? All right, absolutely, Ben. Thanks, brother. Yeah, guys. Sorry, I uh, again, man. It's been a hell of a uh, it's been a hell of a six months just building. So uh, apologize for just jumping right in, but yeah. So SparkSwap is the number two to number three decks uh, on all the pulse chain, depending on you know, what day and, and what time you're looking at it. Uh, we're doing well over a million dollars a day in uh, total volume, and uh, we've been killing it, man. Everything's looking really, really strong. Um, we've had a ton of uh, product market fit real utility that we've launched on Spark. Uh, the flagship for that is the bridge. We have the Arbitrum to PLS and BNB to PLS bridge. Um, uh, to my knowledge, you know, we are one of the only BNB and R bridges, and we have some of the best fees and fastest times uh, out there. So we've been doing, again, multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars a day uh, on the bridge, onboarding people into Pulse. Again, uh, everything that we do here, we want to help create, uh, you know, more opportunity on Pulse. It's not just a matter of, you know, how we can succeed. It's a matter of how do we make Pulse succeed uh, overall. So obviously the bridge was super important. Um, you know, uh, the main Ethereum bridge is great for larger transactions, but uh, everybody's getting wrecked on gas fees. So uh, yeah. even though the main Ethereum bridge is actually free right now, uh, we are able to beat it with even with a 1%. Uh, well, we just update our, our variable fee structure. So uh, if you're going out of Pulse, uh, it's 1%. And if you're coming into Pulse, it's half a percent. So nice. again, trying to keep money uh, on Pulse chain. And well, that, that was another big thing about perps we'll talk about uh, in a minute that I hope will keep money on Pulse. Uh, but yeah, so we, we are able, even with those fees, we're able to beat... Uh, the free bridge just because, again, of those crazy ETH uh, gas fees. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, yeah. So, that's been our claim to fame so far. Uh, a lot of people have been using the bridge uh, way more than the, the uh, main, uh, you know, ETH bridge. Uh, and we also launched uh, Vaults, which uh, is a very powerful auto compounder. Uh, there are a few other auto compounding protocols and uh, balancer pools uh, on Pulse, and shout out to all of them. Uh, but we actually combine both uh, balancer pools and auto compounding. So it's a combination of beefy vaults and, uh, and balancer vaults um, that actually, again, are able to outperform uh, uh, auto, just auto compounding alone uh, up to 7% uh, a year. So again, that sounds like a low number. But if you're if you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, in in rewards over a year, that's a substantial uh, difference. So, and uh, the cool part about the vault is that uh, it also supports Pulse X. So uh, again, any of you that have Pulse X bags, uh, even if you don't even care about Spark uh, or don't even want to have anything to do with Spark, uh, it's a product market fit for Pulse as a whole because. Again, all the Pulse X farms, um, especially now with Inc, you know, going crazy, uh, is, you're, you're, yeah. yeah, you're earning incredibly well uh, on on those auto vaults. So I would encourage all of you that have just you know yield farming positions uh, on Pulse X to look into the auto compounding options. And what that does basically is just sells, uh, you know, a percentage again of their variable, so you can find a vault that that suits your needs. But um, it sells a portion of your rewards for more Pulse and, you know, DAI or whatever LP you're in. So uh, if you're in Pulse DAI, it sells, you know, uh, a percentage of your ink rewards and buys more Pulse and more DAI and creates that uh, that LP position uh, for you. So, again, it's a way to, yeah, it's a way to compound and earn on, on autopilot. But, um, so, yeah, so those are the two big things that we launched. Uh, and now with perps, 
uh, again, we are launching a Perpetuals trading platform. So uh, this is a code that we built for Arbitrum and never uh, were able to really get traction and launch uh, over on Arbitrum. So now, again, having Pulse be EVM uh, compatible, we're, we're applying this technology to Pulse now. And yeah, mm -hmm. uh, to your point, Silver, we are doing uh, BTC to begin with. Um, again, you know, uh, and I know uh, uh, Jason can probably, uh, uh, you know, uh, feel the pain, but oracles are really important uh, on Pulse, so we're, we're trying to be super careful um, actually building our own oracles um, so that we can, again, make sure there's no uh, false uh, liquidations or, you know, uh, uh, manipulated data. Um, and we have a, a time-rated average uh, as part of our oracle that, that really, again, uh, uh, really uh, minimizes the abuse uh, that we see on on smaller liquidity uh, tokens. So. Does that that that, that time by average does that protect against uh, huge um, short lived uh, pr uh, price spikes? Is is that the, the purpose of it? Yeah. So it, you're still going to be getting you know impacted by uh, by by price spikes, but mm -hmm. it, what it does is that it gets rid of the or at least severely reduces the risk of, like, flash loan attacks. So, oh, yeah, scam, uh, scam weeks. Yeah, yeah exactly, like scam weeks. So, mm -hmm. you still get all the quality, and, you know, um, we are, the latency of the trading is extremely low, but uh, because we are fully decentralized option, uh, it's still within the block time. So, you know, uh, you are going to have to get used to trading. Uh, um, you know, uh, again, we, we're pretty competitive, with uh, centralized, you know, platforms again, the the UI, uh, uh, all the functionality, uh, up to uh, eventually up to 100x leverage, uh, all that will be possible. So um, again, it's just going to take some time to roll out. We're starting with BTC, um, and again, not super bullish because I think a lot, and this is the point I wanted to make earlier. Um, I think a lot of outflow. Uh, from Pulse and really all chains uh, to get exposure to Bitcoin and you know uh, people can't help themselves uh, but buying buying the top. So uh, now that we have you know a legitimate BTC uh, vehicle where you can get exposure to BTC by opening a long or a short, uh, you don't have to leave Pulse uh, and move yeah. funds to you know a centralized exchange or. Uh, you know, or, or off-chain period. So I think that's a really cool, like, unintended uh, uh, perk uh, that that we're yeah. seeing. And, you know, we're going to continue to add uh, ETH will be next. Um, and then uh, eventually, again, as long as we have a price feed and the Oracle, we can add, you know, uh, all the PLS tokens, Pulse, Pulse X, and yeah. um, we'll do, you know, Dog with hat, uh, all your favorite memes uh, on ETH and on Pulse. So, you know, what we will be careful of again, Hex uh, and a lot of the other lower liquidity uh, tokens, you know, like uh, Teddy Bear or some of the yeah. other memes uh, on Pulse. Uh, we will have some stipulations on how much leverage you can take. Um, and again, that's just to prevent any, uh, you know, manipulation, uh, you know, from a third yeah. party on that. So, but yeah, man, it's really exciting, and we, we're settling all of our trades in SDI, so that will also create a ton of volume uh, for the DEX as well. Yeah, yeah, well, actually, um, I was talk talking to a couple of people about <clears throat> what RH has been doing um, behind the scenes, obviously moving some funds around, and... Um, you know, uh, I actually, I was, uh, I was speaking to uh, Neil um, um, uh, yesterday um, uh, from Tetra, and um, I was just mentioning, and um, I'll be interested in your comments, that um, RH had, um, well, no, sorry, I should start started at the beginning. Um, uh, Maker uh, had a bit of a falling out with Vitalik and ETH, and um, it sort of... Um, it sort of like created a scenario where where Maker was was sort of saying they're going to create their own blockchain, and then um, all of a sudden now RH is uh, getting involved in Maker, which is obviously Dai, and then Dai is now becoming prominent, um, not on uh, not on ETH, but on, but possibly on Pulse Chain. What what are your thoughts on that? 
just a speculation. Yeah, man. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's really fun to to speculate on all kinds of shit like that. So yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, the the OA wallet is like the number one holder of die. Period. Uh, I think he converted a lot of that uh, into ETH uh, as well, just to get some exposure. But yeah, I mean, the narrative that uh, you know RH has always said out of all the stable tokens, uh, he likes DAI the best. And yeah. yeah, I would, I could absolutely see. You know, in terms of decentralization, uh, DAI is the closest thing you know to a true decentralized stable token. So obviously, I think you know that's why Richard supports it, but. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think we could see a lot more involvement. And again, just so everybody knows, S die is our our own version, a synthetic die or spark die, but it's fully collateralized yeah. with actual die. So, and all that die uh, is either in our treasury uh, or in the bridge itself. Because again, unfortunately, we have to have the admin keys to be able to uh, mint, uh, you know, S die as yeah. it comes over. But we don't we don't just mint S die you know without the collateral backing it in the bridge and that's just how bridges work. So, uh, but other than that, I mean we're fully decentralized. Even the leverage trade in the Perps platform again, uh, no KYC, you know, super again yeah. decentralized. A great option for people that you know uh, that that can't go through sexes for sure. Yeah, I've, I noticed that uh, just, I mean, I also just, we haven't really spoken about this, but I know um, Apex, which is basically, it's owned by Bybit. Uh, they're a fully decentralized exchange with, you know, B, um, B, uh, sorry, BTC, uh, USD and ETH, uh, USD. Um, and um, they're sort of like, you know, separate and, and completely decentralized. So basically, with you, I wanted to ask you too the BTC that you're using that you're trading. So it's S, it's S in the per perpetual exchange. It's S die in, and then essentially, um, how does the BC, BTC and, and USD get traded? Is it is is it in? Uh, you said it was in Pulse Chain assets and staying within Pulse. Could you explain yeah, a little sure. bit of that that mechanism? Is it what what sort of BTC is it? Is it wrap BTC that breaks in for uh -huh. or is it? So 100%, this is why, you know, uh, again, it's full, leverage trading is as degen as it gets, uh, and we, we bring the, the degen to a whole other level. So uh, unlike, you know, a GMX fork, um, you know, which again, uh, fam, great guys, you know, we, we love them, uh, uh, but they have, their trading, again, any GMX fork is about uh, having collateral. So you have to have the collateral of the actual assets to you know uh complete the trades and that is a little bit limiting because uh there are first of all you can't go at heavy leverage uh you know if there isn't enough collateral you can't mm -hmm. even place a trade um and if you're in a trade and the collateral you know gets eaten up uh there there, there are situations where again uh you either get stopped out or automatically closed uh, or, you know, you just can't uh, create new trades. So mm -hmm. with our, our platform, we're actually, we're, and we've, we've built the, the code from the ground up, but we're most closely mm -hmm. reverse engineering uh, the gains network, or GNS. Um, mm -hmm. And so that, again, uh, is way more flexible where we don't have to have collateral. So the short answer is uh, there is no funds backing, uh, you know, in terms of actual assets. You're essentially just betting on price feeds, uh, um, but again, you know, in the world of, of degenerate leverage trading, uh, all that doesn't matter. And as long as S die, you know, we'll, we'll have over a million dollars of liquidity uh, on S die when we launch uh, mm -hmm. the beta, the public beta. Um, and again, I mean, we have not only is it fully collateralized, but we have uh, price stabilization bots on S die. Um, so the only potential risk. Uh, is S die be pegging? Uh, but again, I mean, we don't we, we don't see that being an issue. Um, and yeah, I mean, you're you're betting uh, on the prices of you know Bitcoin going up and down, and uh, it allows you to take a lot more liberties uh, having it built this way for sure. So you're basically it, creating a market. Basically, it's, it's very much similar to um, um, Bitmex. Uh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Very much more similar to that. Or again, I mean, you know, buy bit. I mean, any of those uh, centralized yeah. options that 
that, you know, because they, they say they're, they have collateral, but let's all be real. I mean, the sexes, they're just paper, paper trading as well. So, exactly. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Exactly. So, someone else had a comment? Yeah. Hey, AJ. Um, last question uh, for you before we get to the, uh, we turn it over to Hexa Kuchner and, uh, and he talks a little bit about the Trinity Project. Last sure. question. So, when do you expect to be out of beta? And when can the people um, possibly see that available? Monday. Absolutely, bro. So we are we're we're gonna hopefully be in public beta. Uh, like I said, Monday. Uh, you know, it may even happen over the weekend. We're we're way ahead of schedule. Um, and then probably have beta for at least uh three weeks to a month. Uh, hopefully we can come out of beta even sooner. But um, and really the only reason we're calling it beta is just so people get familiar with the platform. Um, you know, allows us to to make sure everything is working well. Uh, and really, it's more about educating people, too, because a lot of people don't know uh, even how to leverage trade or, you know, uh, and again, I mean, we, we, this is, uh, real DeFi is a whole separate topic than leverage trading. I mean, we've been very uh, open and, and transparent that, that leverage trading can really uh, get you wrecked. So again, enter at your own risk, uh, mm -hmm. but we're going to do everything we can to provide that opportunity for the Pulse DGENs. And, you know, uh, again, within this month beta, uh, again, hopefully even less than that, uh, we will be able to start adding more tokens uh, and have a whole educational series about our platform. Uh, and, and last but not least, all the volume, uh, again, uh, helps feed Sparkler as well. So, you know, theoretically speaking, uh, we, we, we didn't launch another token. You know, a lot of leveraged trading platforms will have mm -hmm. a secondary uh, native asset. Well, we're just funneling all the fees and, and you know, uh, 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 momentum into Spark and Sparkler. So, you know, it should also have a positive price impact. Yeah, yeah. And AJ, AJ you can lock up your uh, SI in the contract and earn uh, fees, yeah? Is that how I... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so again, another great question. So there is a liquidity pool, uh, and that is another thing with beta. Uh, during beta, we probably will just have uh, protocol-owned liquidity. So uh, all the PLL uh, that we provide, again, it should be over a million bucks uh, by the time it launched. That will all be uh, uh, PLL protocol-owned liquidity. But yeah, uh, eventually as we scale, then yeah, the idea is that we also allow people to provide liquidity uh, uh, to the pool and then therefore get a portion of fees. So we, uh, we'll have all that in our legitimate white paper when uh, that's ready. But again, that's just another reason we're calling this beta because there are a little, a lot of loose ends just in terms of the, you know, fee structures and, you know, uh, 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 white paper and documentation that we want to be able to still get out. But we felt it was really important to get uh, perps out at ASAP. Um, and again, keep people on pulse that want exposure to Bitcoin without having to bridge off. Perfect. Uh, you, you know that I, that's something I've, I've been wanting to because, like, I mean, when I'm trading uh, 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 Bitcoin USD, I'm doing it probably on at the moment just on, on Binance chain, you know? So, yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd love to be doing all that stuff over on Pulse Chain, and this is another step towards that. that that's really good. Another thing too, can I just while I quickly got you? Sorry, everybody. Um, yeah. With with the with the leverage side of things, um, as far as your education piece, can I just uh, put a little suggestion in there that um, when when we're when you're doing that is uh, you know we obviously call leverage D degen and all that sort of stuff, but like mo modest to low leverage or or perhaps a little bit of a higher leverage if you uh, as a hedging uh, strategy if you hold let's say for example if you haven't diversified and you've got a big bag of, of Bitcoin you can actually hedge against that using leverage in case something were to move against your your big bag. So uh, I just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah, so those are great points, man. Again, I uh, could not agree more. And yeah, I mean, leverage leverage uh, is very powerful if it's done right. And you know, and to your point as well, you know, uh, I also think it's important, like you said, that we we try to educate people on that. Uh, it provides a great hedge. Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it gets a, a bad name, but it also can be extremely powerful. Um, and again, the more the more people 
whether it's up or down, you know, that's more volume for us, no matter what happens. And last but not least, you can also actually use the platform um, as a limit order service as well. So that's really cool. Again, mm -hmm. uh, you know, having low leverage and setting your stop losses can also act as limit orders for uh, BTC. So yeah, there's a lot of cool yeah. things that make leverage really powerful. You just have to know how to use it for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And yeah, stop, everyone, use stop losses. <laughs> use yeah, stop losses. Yeah. Uh, look at the market structure and use them. Um, so uh, Executioner, um, so thanks, AJ. Uh, Hedrick Executioner, would you want to uh, step up and, and talk about what, what you've been doing? Sure, absolutely. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, it sounds good, man. So we actually got a couple of things. Uh, let me introduce myself. I, uh, I've been around for in, in this community probably for about five years now, uh, through Hex, through Hedron, through Icosa, and a couple other things. Uh, a lot of people probably know me through a lot of liquidity talks. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Uniswap v3 came out everyone was really kind of confused about a lot of that stuff and I lay down the law on the logistics of mitigation and a lot of stuff right so we get into a lot of game theory a lot of talks about a lot of things and have for years and now I think we decided that we were going to do some collaborations and some games some game theory uh, build a, the community of people who want to participate in things together and uh, build off of things like this. So the first thing that, that I'd like to mention that we have going on uh, right now, live right now, is the Ocelot's NFT collection. Uh, if you guys uh, haven't been paying attention or didn't have the opportunity to be aware of this, but uh, before we launched the Ocelot, or I lost, launched the Ocelot's NFT collection, there was a launch for uh, Crypto Sloth, who has mm -hmm. a sloth collection. Mm -hmm. And uh, also a collection for Red Squirrel, who has his squirrels collection. This collection, um, even though they're all separate collections, have their own benefits and things like this. Uh, with my collection specifically, uh, which we launched on the 7th, so just a couple of days ago, with maybe like two days of notice for anybody. Uh, so it was kind of fair, pretty fair launch. Uh, at the very beginning, the base price of that is, is 1 million pulse. Uh, that was before the, the rise in price, but it, it's inconsequential as far as that, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there's an optional, this is a little bit different than, than some uh, NFTs that you'd be having options to mint with at the time that you mint it. Uh, with this one, you actually get an option to capture the royalties for yourself. Uh, there's 18% uh, royalties on the NFTs. Mm -hmm. uh, it, at the base price of a million pulse when you mint it, it's just like normal. The the artist gets, which is me, would get those royalties at 18% if mm -hmm. they were on the uh, th third party trading back and forth. But with the second option for 2 million pulse, you can actually lock that in as that royalty is the wallet that minted it at that time for every trade gets that 18% for life, mm -hmm. forever, mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you can calculate how many times that needs to be sold before you're back out of, you know, you're in the black. Mm -hmm. uh, Really, really kind of neat kind of game theory as far as that's concerned. Um, and then on top of that, uh, there's other benefits that'll come along with my collection as well. Uh, not limited to these particular things I'm mentioning, like access to games. Uh, those things will come out later when I say that, the games, potential games. Uh, airdrops, prize draws, and access to strategies. Mm -hmm. uh, we are indirectly linked to Stratus. Uh, we've we've had many talks with Stu uh, through Tetra, and uh, I believe we've got we've gone to the support that we need to be the first uh, sort of collection slash entity that is launching off of of this type of protocol that Stu has going on. Mm -hmm. So it's it's fun for us and really interesting to get into the nitty gritty on how it all works. But as far as game theory and and setting up. Uh, new types of ideas and things that people just aren't quite really used to, uh -huh. but it would be fun and necessity, a necessity for Pulse Chain to build things that would draw in the eyes of other networks, people that are on other networks that don't have those types of things, right? Yeah. Something for us to brag about, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Which all come around to, to the Trinity set. Yeah. The Trinity uh, protocol that we're building right now is 
a collabor collaboration between myself, Red, and CryptoSloth. The goal there is to create a foundational protocol that makes each of our NFT collections interchangeable mm -hmm. with 555 of our respective tokens. That means that there will be three ERC-20 tokens rolling out at the same time the Trinity launches. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, that's that's interesting. Right. As far as as far as being able to uh, expose yourself to arbitrage mm -hmm. at that moment. Uh, that is where the game will in line. There'd be a lot. There'd be game theory with those types of things as far as what you want to do with each respective NFT and the benefits that they hold, mm -hmm. and then your opportunity to also make some money on the side by taking these things and using them and, and committing arbitrage. Mm -hmm. Right. Can you, can, uh, can, you go, fun. can you go into a bit more detail about that, how the arbitrage happens? Is it between the different collections, like the different series, or executioner? Uh, well, so each executioner. Yes, sir. I, I think for people um, uh, listening, right, I don't think they fully understand how this NFT is different. And when you say strategy and atlas or stratus, how that will be applied. Yep. Can you tell them how that works? Because the arbitrage is part of that. Because this is a very unique um, NFT. And I just want to say this. Like, the Red Squirrels sold out in 45 minutes, okay? Uh, Sloth sold out in a couple hours, all right? These are basically, generally, they'll be working together. So there is, there is opportunity here. And if you understand what these guys are saying and how they're going to be applied to Stratus and Atlas, because there isn't too many people people who know it better than Red Squirrel and these guys in applying these types of strategies. So I think first let the people know kind of a little bit more uh, about that, please, because I think this is a very important topic for people to get in on what you're talking about because they might not have these skills and it's a good opportunity. Yeah, for sure. Um, I said the same thing in less words, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like <laughs> you know, with my with my NFT collection, it'll it'll grant users, uh, owners, the access to the strategies that are implemented by me within the Stratus protocol. Um, when when Stratus activates, then uh, I'll have whitelist. I'll have a whitelist of of the owners, uh, so I'll be able to to directly give people direct access to, to my stuff by owning that. Um, so there's a benefit. Yeah, when they're activated, the Stratus protocol, you know, it, it, it allows strategists to uh, construct personalized smart contracts, you know, featuring sequences of automated smart, you know, like contract calls. Uh, they're executed independently by the Stratus protocol. And because of that, we'll literally be able to make strategies on all sorts of crazy shit, guys. And you mean other you mean, you mean other, other smart contracts out there that exist, or? Well, I mean, sure. I, I mean, when getting into the Stratus, Stratus protocol, as long as it's a verified contract, mm -hmm. uh, you will be able to expose the functions that are in those contracts. And because of those types of things, we will be able to reach out to anything that's on the blockchain and be able to see what's inside of it and how it works. Mm -hmm. So we may be able to use that to our advantage because we know how that those types of things work. Yeah, other people will be able to come build strategies for the things that they want to make their lives convenient. Mm -hmm. Right, but what about some of the strategies that people aren't going to be aware that they're going to be able to do? Well, we'll we will implement those ideas, absolutely, and and we happen to know a lot of these protocols extremely intimately mm -hmm. to know where these um, outliers reside, yep. right? Yep. Or you know, and because of that, if you get access to those things, then you're it's almost like getting alpha. Without no. sitting around listening to it, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so is that is <laughs> you just kind of is, is, so so the uh, I I love I love art, a beautiful artwork. Who doesn't? And uh, it's it's the utility of that that uh, NFT that everyone's listening closely. Is is that going to be like linked somehow to clever strategies, or you know, you're going to be able to benefit some way by by owning that NFT to get access to those strategies? Um, you wouldn't explicitly need, uh, I guess, like I said, you could, I could whitelist any of the addresses that have the specific NFT in it. Yeah. So, and, and on top of, not only that, but when you go mint, here's some game theory I'll drop for you guys. When you go mint an ocelot, the best thing that you could do for yourself is to make sure that in that wallet, you have a squirrel or a sloth because a, first of all, you'll get a discount off of the price. Uh huh right off the top. You get 5% for each one that's that's in there. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I would take advantage of doing that. And what most people don't know, unless you can read code, right? If you if you went and looked at the Ocelot code and went and saw there, then you would see something that's kind of that would make you question, like, what are these guys up to? Yeah. Because we have something called a Trinity set. That if you have a squirrel in that wallet and you have a sloth in that wallet and you go mint an Ocelot, then the the protocol seems to be paying attention to you mm -hmm. because it puts you on a, a what we call a Trinity set list that we could use. I don't know, whenever we decide to give uh, maybe benefits or whatever, you know, it may be a, a benefit to you to do those types of things. But, 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 but never once. <laughs> yeah, potentially. Yeah. yeah, we set it up for this. And on top of it, I got a royalty set too. So I've got a, a separate list mm -hmm. that it that it keeps track of, of the people who want the royalties too, mm -hmm. right? So it's like your level, of, your level of participation may be rewarded in a certain respect. And then... I can throw more game theory in, guys. Like, I could I could throw out all sorts of ideas that may or may not be implemented. I don't want to really do that to confuse anybody as far as, as far as, like, we'll release those details later. But if you're in the chats, like, Telegram chats, um, right now would probably be the best time to try to get, ask us questions about how, how it works right now, where we're, our, our thought processes on how we want it to work. And if you give your thoughts on things and have ideas or whatever we may implement it right yeah. like the, this is a, the, the opportunity to do those types of things if that was the case right yeah absolutely um yeah i mean and and i i got a question from somebody in telegram about uh what would be is is the launch of trinity contingent on on the sellout of of ocelots <laughs> uh and I and I'd say no, it it isn't it it is not contingent. Uh, so Trinity can release at any moment, right? Yeah. Uh, well, so uh, the one interesting thing is, is if it's not sold out by then, then the price movements of the ERC twenties could potentially create an arbitrage right there when you're buying an NFT from the contract for one million pulse, and then provide yourself with the five hundred five hundred fifty five ocelot tokens. Mm -hmm. And if they're worth more than the one million pulse, then you have that arbitrage right there at that moment. So it may it may force the mint to go a little bit faster after Trinity had been launched. But if it has been already minted out by then, then that opportunity doesn't exist, mm -hmm. which is it's OK. I'm fine with it either way, because I might be the one that takes advantage of that at that time, if that's the case. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, I, I can't say that I would, but it it is nice to let people know that there's there's always a reflexivity to these systems and how you build them. You just have thoughtfulness in how you're going to build these things. And then it tends to work out because your rate of success goes up significantly just with the participation of the community. Mm -hmm. Right. So having a little bit of outreach is, is really good, but garnering the participation of everybody that thinks that it's fun or they have the benefits or they want this or that or the other is something that we're going to try to provide for everybody. So it's interesting for the DeFi, for DeFi bros, for NFT bros, for DGENs, for everybody. It's a little bit of things for everybody that interests them. Yeah. So that's what we're working towards that we would really like to do. Um, I just want to be, I want it to be out there too. I'm excited for it too. I'm gonna, I would like to use it I know other people would like to use it, uh, and as soon as the, the, the price of the ERC-20 goes up and then the contract starts getting loaded up with NFTs and you're just watching those things happen, uh, and then in the reverse, if the price goes down and people start taking the NFTs out of the contract so they can do arbitrage things at that point, and it's not just my NFT and my, my uh, ERC-20 token now at that point it's the squirrels and it's the sloths so imagine what those liquidity pools are going to look like yeah. when they're just paired against each other and, and vice versa i mean you guys are not only just going to have the real world asset of, of pulse on the outside or whatever we have connected through there like that'll be uh you know we'll, we'll make those decisions other people might even make other pairs who knows right like this will be a, something that will also garner the participation of the builders too because you'll be able to build on top of this yep. now what that may look like or what that may be uh is the fun part right because you may have an idea at the beginning of the road but by the time you get into it it's going to be built by the community for the community mm -hmm. and that's what we would like to do so that's that's what we're going to do <laughs> you know sorry to sorry to run you guys through the mill but maybe i'll have to keep coming back into some of these chats i was going to say kind of give the updates and things like this i was going to i was going to say that it, it's not one run through uh discussing all these different concepts that uh is going to uh you know get get better understanding of how people can 
can can take action and, and uh, understand it better. It's it's certainly back. Hey mate, I'll, I'll be here. I'm here every weekend, so it, it is an open invitation to you to jump on and uh, chat about it um, and get people to understand it better as as we go. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's it's exciting. That's for sure. And I appreciate you guys allowing the opportunities for us to come in here and uh, shamelessly shill and stuff like that. But I mean, I I just really want. I I have a lot of people who support me and have been for a long time telling me to do this and do that and do the other and do all these things. And I've always really kind of just sat back because I like the position that I was at. But now the opportunity is here for all these things. And I want to give back to those who've been supporting me for such a long time. And uh, I, I, this is this is the best thing to do, in my opinion. It's great. Okay, I can hear. I, I can hear. I'm sure everyone else can hear the excitement in your voice. And um, I was I was I was watching. Uh, I was watching the ocelot uh, sales go through, and um, uh, it was a good moment. Yeah, I, I was in the voice chat too. Um, I was so proud. We had a, we had, we actually spiked the gas prices on Pulse Chain. I had to tell people to be aggressive <laughs> and all that. That's right. But and ex yes. executioner, you did really no advertising, right? Like you know what, yeah. what you got and stuff like that. So. You know, uh, drop your Telegram um, group in the uh, I, comments I, there for people that are interested because I just did. I chucked it in the. Thank you. So there's a video in the left there uh, that it, that's got the oscillates uh, there. So it's got the website address. If you guys are interested in it, um, perfect. The, the amazing. Perfect. Perfect. We got Stu here. We got Stu. Hey Stu, how are you? Can you talk, or you want you just uh, in listen mode, mate? Oh, I, I only just came in to listen. And I actually thought I would end up being in bed at this time, to be honest. But um, I, had a, I had a call with um, a couple of people earlier, and I, know, I, I realized the time, and I thought, ah, so that it's a Saturday night. So I've cracked open a beer, and I thought I'd listen, and then Ben invited me to speak. So yeah, that's, that's all right, though. <laughs> uh, that's that's good. So um, yeah, so I, I, I would I already know the answer to the question, but probably uh, probably by by next weekend there might there might be a few more things we can uh, probably have a, a chat about and go into some detail about what you've been up to. Oh yeah, uh, mate. Yeah, I thought you were going to say when Steakham, and I was just going to say soon. <laughs> Two weeks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but like yeah, everyone, everyone understands, you know. Um, software is hard. It all takes time, and uh, I think every everyone here on this call uh, that's that's got a protocol understands what it's like. Yeah. Well, we are, we are, exactly. Yeah. Mate. We, had, we actually had a, um, a, a, an impromptu opened up the the VC and the, the main Tetra Telegram chat tonight. We had Paul, who's the, um, the the chief technology officer, or that's his title anyway. For um, Intra, um, in, in, so he's a so he's a dev. He, he, he knows, yeah. he knows uh, he's been around blockchain and he's uh, quite a knowledgeable guy. Um, it was another really good conversation that lasted about an hour. But anyway, a whole bunch of people jumped in there, and and he was just kind of just trying to understand what we were doing. So it was kind of the the one on one on on Tetra. Okay. But then we started to kind of go off on a tangent on a lot of the technicalities of what it is that we've done, what what we're doing, and what we're bringing to the market, and. Um, it kind of, kind of felt like a bit of vindication. It's like, yeah, he realizes, but you know, a lot of people within the community that are here because they um, are interested in the tools that we're going to be providing. Um, mm -hmm. That it's kind of like you're, you're hearing this for somebody else. But yes, it is fucking hard. Software is hard, um, mm -hmm. but it's only hard. It's, it's only really hard if you don't know what you're doing. And and um, at the end of the day, like you can achieve anything. Like in code, like you can literally do anything in code. Um, it's, but if you don't know what you're doing, it's really hard. And, um, mm. and and that's the fact. Even the guys that know what they're doing and you want to make it easy for people, that makes it even harder. Uh, so the amount of thought process and general software development is already difficult. But when fi financial losses or gains are involved, it makes it even more um it makes it even more difficult because you need to think about the, the mitigation of risk um, with the things that you design and the way that things work. So, 
Um, yeah, yes, it's hard, but um, we want to make sure that when we launch, like for example, the staking contract will be a fully immutable contract. Uh, no admin keys, just like the Tetra token itself. There is no admin key for Tetra tokens. Um, as 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 DeFi like to the nth degree, so we want to make sure that we get that right. And because obviously, hey, I might have worked like, into that just a second. Yeah, yeah, just a second. Um, like we want to make sure that when we launch that contract, it's going to be a hundred percent safe, a hundred percent immutable. That it functions in the way that it was designed to function. Um, so you know, we take we take pride in that, and that's that's just the way that it does it goes. And um, that takes a little bit of extra time, unfortunately. So, but we are where we are, and we're generating really good fees with Tetra as well. Um, that are going to be delivered on a big payday when the staking goes live. Um, we've up. got com yeah, it's really building up big time. It's, it's great, especially with our protocol uh, going live as well. We're now whitelisting um, Earn and PXDC, uh, mm -hmm. so you can do your limit orders with that kind of stuff over there as well. Right now, catch the dips. Um, oh, so that's that, that's okay to use now on Omnus, yeah. Um, yeah, I would I would maybe wait until tomorrow. Actually, yeah. I'm going to put an announcement out tomorrow, and um, just to like I've held back because we've been doing some some testing just to make sure it's 100. percent There was a bit of an issue with the the router contract on Pulse X that we were using, um, but I had been speaking to Jesse over at, um, at, at Power City and. Um, got the sort of lowdown on how they provided liquidity because I was scratching my head and everyone was normal. It seems to be like a bit of a Pulse X um, quirk, if that makes sense. And there's loads of that in the Pulse chain. So uh, <laughs> it's just yet yeah. another um, yeah. corner to navigate. So <laughs> well, it's, it's hey, fine. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. Right? Guys, guys, so there's always new people that are joining, right? And this is, you know, we've always got new people coming into our community. So just could could you just briefly tell most of us know, but we uh, we got to cater to new people. Can you just briefly tell us, you know, uh, about Tetra? What is Tetra, right? What are you set forth to accomplish, and what do you got for the people that you know don't know? It's always a good place to take cater to these people so they at least get the basics if they're just jumping in here. Mm -hmm. I think I think it was a good question, and uh, and um, I think because of where we are at this stage at the minute. We want to bring complex DeFi tools to everybody and lower the barrier to entry to be able to use it. So we, we, we reduce the, um, the sort of learning curve, if you like. What is a limit order? How do you set a limit order? How do you set a limit order and not get wrecked, right? Like something like that, just as a very simple example. Somebody that's never set a limit order before probably doesn't know what a fucking limit order is, right? So we, we, we're we developing tools that um, allow you to do your DeFi. Um, we're trying to build these tools in such a way that uh, protect users. But ultimately, our, our end goal, and that, that's been part of the journey. I think that message has kind of changed because of what we've done with Omnis uh, out of necessity. Um, but our, our ultimate goal with uh, Tetra as an overall protocol is to make to make DeFi accessible for, for everybody, but to allow you to automate your DeFi as well. So, um, the executioner, um, um, I was actually listening in earlier before I got the invite up to speak, but executioner done a really good example of, like, um, you know, just, just like if you can do something manually in a smart contract and the contract is fully exposed as a verified contract, you can see the functions, Anything you can do manually in the blockchain, we want to make it um, available for you to automate in a, um, in a Tetra strategy, if you will. So any of these functions that are available, whether it's like a stake function, an end stake, um, you know, a swap, a limit order, uh, um, you know, an arbitrage, all of these different sort of things, to a lot of people can be quite confusing. Mm -hmm. So we want to provide tools that allow people to drag and drop the ideas that they've got uh, with these protocols to, to build stuff um, in a visual way that generates your own smart contract, not your smart contract, not your crypto, right? Mm -hmm. And deploy that smart contract to the blockchain to effectively um, then make, make those steps when the market conditions are met based on the, the, the things that you've 
um, set it up to do. So it's, it's if then yeah. this kind of thing, you know, it's like it's like Zapier for the the blockchain, if you like, right? Um, yeah. So so that's that's kind of where that's Stratus. That's the main protocol, the Stratus and Atlas element. Yeah. Um, what about this, dude? Yeah, go on. So 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 you know, for people. But probably 90% of the people aren't going to use it like that. Can you talk a little, because I know a lot about your protocol. Can you tell people the brilliancy of it, how people are going to, most people are going to use it, right? They're just going to be able to click on these strategies. That's the real magic in this is that these will be created and clicked on. And so for the average person, like that's how they'll be using it. And can you talk a little bit about that? Because that's probably to me the most beautiful part of it and how it's going to spread and it will be mass adopted and it's going to really change our blockchain because of the ease of that. You mean the pre pre done ones? Community pre done strategies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, I think that's what Ben's talking about there. So the um so Stratus um is, is the drag and drop tool to build your to build your smart contract zero code, right? Which is ultimately a strategy that's all I need. Um mm -hmm. but then let's say perhaps that you don't know about the Akisa Icosahedron ecosystem. You don't know really much about Hex, let's say, I know I mean, everybody in this community knows about Hex, but newbies mm -hmm. don't, right, and people are coming over, and we want them to utilize all of these DeFi protocols. Um, Earn protocol, we've got Liquid Loans now that's live. Uh, Earn just went live, and then we've had Liquid Loans for a while. We've got various other DeFi protocols that are becoming available. So it's kind of like... What is what is uh what is a fork of liquidity? What what is liquid loans? What is what is uh, earn protocol? How can I leverage the tools of that project uh, to actually like get real yield? How can I you know how can I like navigate the complexities of each of these ind individual projects and protocols uh, where you know I can put some money into something that's going to go and do something and generate yield. Um, so these pre-built strategies, which are effectively built by the community, um, can be made available in the Atlas front end, which is kind of our, that's kind of the go-to kind of like, um, uh, uh, right, here's a good way of putting it, right? So, so there's these centralized kind of systems where you can like follow trade a wallet, let's say, right? Yeah. So, so like, yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. I can't remember like the names of these things. Uh, copy trade, copy trade, yeah, copy, right, copy trade. That's it, exactly. Yeah. So imagine having a having a um, a front end that allows you to copy strategies, right? So you're mm -hmm. you're you're copying the trades, but you're deploying it yourself. You're not relying on somebody else's kind of stuff, and you can switch it up. So you can actually then just go ahead and like deploy your own smart contract that executes the same um, the same strategy. functions, mm -hmm. the same strategy, yeah. But you might have much less capital or you might not be willing to um, take that much of a swing in a particular part of a trade, for example, mm -hmm. or you might not want to stay quite as long. So you're going to have the ability to be able to like t tweak these parameters suited to your kind of... Yeah, customize, customize um, sort of the pre-built strategies. So yeah, all of that's all of that's um, going to be available there. And if, if you know, um, there's going to be a whole bunch of different strategies where you can just say, well, I want my principal amount to be X, and I want it to kind of continuously loop around this yield-bearing strategy within these DeFi protocols and get more of this and get more of that and. Either I want to sell it or I want to stake it or I want to, you know, I want to do this kind of stuff. So you ultimately just get your time back. Exactly. And you can't put, really put a value on someone's time because you don't know um, what, what someone's bag size is. Like uh, Jeff Bezos's hour is worth a lot more than, you know, a, a young 20-year-old earning minimum wage. So um, you just, you don't know. Um, so there, there, therein lies the value. Um I just thought, just a, as a set of side side issue, I've been mucking around with uh, AI agents and stuff like that. I've tried uh, IFTTP uh, and just uh, I just wanted to get uh, immerse myself in it and just use them. And like um, you know, uh, IFTTP for example, that's another uh, automation agent. 
Um, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't really handle um, a full gambit of what you want. Um, some of the other AI agents that they've got relationships with Google, um, where they have to integrate with centralized things. So this is I, I'm really uh, yeah. I'm one, looking... of, one, of, one of the main reasons. I mean, we were when, when our uh, it must have been it must have been at least six months to a year ago where we had like at least a year ago where people were sort of saying oh you're going to integrate ai you're going to do this and i'm like well no i mean even at that stage it was in its infancy even at this stage it's in its infancy i think that when you present to somebody a, a tool of automation that if you integrate a, an ai into that it's kind of then the ai becomes financial advice and if the AI model is not trained enough, then you're the one that, that exactly. you know, us, us as a project then become responsible for the model that then gives the financial advice. So um, yeah. that, that is a realm that I'm not prepared to go into at this stage right now. I mean, it is going to get better. And I think that, you know, the protocol that we're, that we're going to be providing uh, for everybody um, yeah. can be built upon as well. So if somebody comes up with uh, or wants to spend a million hours training uh, an AI model on everything to do with blockchain and then spend another 100,000 hours on every new protocol that comes out after it's been yeah. trained to then right. teach it how it needs to operate, then go ahead and, and do that. Um, it might be yeah. easier to train AI models and that million hours then becomes 10 hours. That's when right. I'll really start to pay attention to that kind of thing because when when the technology matures, then the opportunities present themselves. In the short term, people need to be in control of their own decisions. Um, you you as a as a as a as a, a blockchain enthusiast, shall we say, or an investor, you are in you you're custodian of your own money on the yeah. blockchain, right? Uh, why would you ever want to hand that over to an a, a unknown um, computer program? that has only the, the knowledge that's been given to it and you don't know what that is. You, you might as well just give it your secret. Yeah, exactly. You might as well just give it your secret. Just give it your secret. It's reporting back data all the time. I mean, if you want to order a burrito for Mexicanas in your local restaurant or you want to book a flight, return flight to Vegas or something like that, maybe. Well, but that's where I can do no, all the... Yeah, if, the, yeah. If, the AI model doesn't, if the AI model doesn't know what a seed phrase is or a burrito then what the fuck is it going to do with it, you know? So I'm not opposed yeah. to AI. I, I'm totally not anti-AI. But in a DeFi environment, I think it's high risk. And it's, it's much more high risk than I'm prepared to put or make available with our tools at this yeah. stage because, you know, it's, it's in its infancy. So um, yeah. people people will um, spearhead that and try and, you know, uh, break, you know, make it available and do stuff. And, and that's cool. Do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'll watch on the sidelines and, and I will see how it's, it succeeds and how it fails. And the, uh, there might be a time in the future that that, that could be something that we want to um, offer up. But like I said, yeah. people can build yeah. that into the, the main Tetra protocol without it being a, a service that we provide. We, we, are, we are not um, service providers other than the tools that we make available. If you want yeah. to use an AI to, to, to control your automations, it's like automating your automations, then go ahead. The, the, yeah, your yeah. capabilities of doing that will be available. You're, you're 100% right because you have to train your AI as well. It's not like, also all it does is go around uh, and you can train it to click on certain stuff in websites and you can't get it to, to, to authorize the transaction in a crypto wallet anyway. So it's completely out, it's, it's web-based. So it's basically, it's, 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 all, it's all in web too. You know, it's it's we're we're in web web three, <laughs> so we want smart contracts and uh, rules and uh, uh, the right right things in place and security. So is paramount with when it comes to money, hundred percent. No, I just wanted to broach it because I've just been playing around just out of interest with some of these uh, 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 agents. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So you know, I, this is what I just want to say about Tetris too. So like, if I was the average guy. I'm sitting here listening to all these founders come up, right? And they're, you know, they're talking about their protocol and there's a lot to learn, right? Like there's so much to learn. It's like, where do you start, right? Like, what do I do, right? There's these opportunities out there, right? And that's the beauty of Tetra and the automation is that you're going to have, you're going to have hundreds and thousands 
after a period of time of these most complex DeFi strategies being created by the community, right? And all the average person has to do is click on that and deploy that and they can do whatever that strategy is doing, that complex thing, right? So like, that's the key, right? Like, that's huge for the average person. And I know that, 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 um, that we're talking about that, but I just want to like hammer that home and how important that's going to be that, you, you know what I mean? Like the average guy, like, okay, these strategies, this, that, but they're going to be, these things are going to be built. And the average guy can get into like these crazy DeFi strategies in one click. Like that's what it takes to be successful. Like the ease of crypto and people coming in, like, there's so many barriers to entrance, but now that new people are coming in, they can get into these, these, you know, now I'm repeating myself, but no, I just right. wanted to put that out there and just like hammer that that's home. Right. No, exactly. I mean, from, uh, not to put words in your mouth, Stu, from, from Stu's uh, standpoint, Tetra is not the uh, creator of these strategies, the community is. And then basically once, once people come in and start building these strategies, uh, well, once Stratus is, is out, then, um, you know, they're, they're going to garner some attention, some, some, uh, uh, some recognition, some reliability, and then the trust is built. And then, um, you know, it's something we can direct people to, hey, I'm, I'm using this strategy in, you know, and I trust it with my wallet. It is a community-based uh, strategy, and it's re really, it really checks out, it works well, and, and then, uh, you know, trust is built over, over, over time like that. And, uh, but I think the strategies come from the community. It's a, it's a, uh, I think Stu's mentioned before, it's a sandbox, you know, it's just tools, you know, so, um, so Tetra doesn't want to be, the, I, I don't think the, the creator of the strategy is coming from the community. And then basically we're going to land upon things like, you know, solid, solid strategies that are just time tested that are going, oh, this is 100% cool with, you know, uh, the, the hex, um, a contract or ICOSA or what, whichever one it is. And it's just gets built over time and, yeah, uh, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Stuart. Am I, am I off the mark there? Is that how, how, you, how it's going to roll? You're absolutely right. No, that, that interpretation is bang on because, like, like you said, I mean, we just want to provide the tools that allow people to do what they want to do. And mm -hmm. I, I've always said this right from the very, very start, is I do not, uh, I cannot envisage everything that anybody would ever want to use these tools for. We want to make them robust enough that allow people to do what they want to do. But it's like somebody's like somebody that really knows a specific protocol particularly well. And that might be even the founder of that protocol. And they say, actually, do you know what? I could use I could use uh, automations with Stratus and Tetra to be able to um, build something that would take me weeks to create a solidity contract for. And then I need to get to audit and all that kind of stuff. We want to provide tools that allow you to do that, um, either as an individual, as a project, or whatever it may be, to, to leverage the ideas in a rad, rapid application development environment, zero code, um, with, with trusted uh, or, or verified code that then ultimately gets deployed in a smart contract. So, um, you know, your, your, your wallet, your MetaMask wallet is effectively a smart contract. Although it's defined differently on the blockchain, it is a contract. It does exist as an address, you know. So it's 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 taken the fundamental aspects, taken what what is tried and tested technology, and we are evolving it into something that allows people to do things in a way that they've never been able to do before. Yeah, yeah. And then can I expand on that real quick? Absolutely. If you don't mind? For sure. With with what he's kind of saying there a little bit is should be in, really interesting for people who consider themselves builders, because to <clears throat> maybe the outlook would be oh well, I found a smart contract that I want to expose and I want to utilize it to get a benefit or some leading edge on that thing because I'm aware of the protocol. Mm -hmm. But as a builder and you go I would really like to have this smart contract that does this thing so you just build it and then integrate it yeah. into Stratus right away. And that's what we are going to do. That's our intention. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's great. Like you can't be any more excited for this stuff to come out. So I'm I'm, I'm just patiently waiting. I'm with you. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I, I got shit. I got shit. I want to build too. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna hit all those problems, and and uh, I'm gonna be leaning on all you guys. So um, get ready for. <laughs> The, 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 yeah, the, man. The, the custom, custom smart contracts, bro. Yeah, custom. Yeah. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Yeah. Also, 
we've also got Pulsar in the chat, um, Crypto Kool Aid, so maybe you can get him up. Obviously, Kyle's here, so if you want to space yeah. him, Kyle, go ahead. Yeah, please just uh, just start to speak. I'll bring you up. Um, anyone that, do is, that doesn't want to speak, you can. If, I think we've got enough. We've got enough spots here. Yeah, just jump up and uh, just request, request the mic, and I'll bring you up. Um, don't don't worry about my my usual time limit. This is a good space. Uh, I'm not going to cut it short. So uh, we've got a, we've got a, we've got time. So I'm I'm really enjoying the the conversation today. It's been really really good. We're hearing from everybody, which is really good. Well. Yeah, uh, what's going on, fellas? Um, hey, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Stu, I got a quick question. Because uh, I'm, I'm honestly a big fan of Tetra, and I'm, I'm waiting for it as well. So is it going to be just PRC20s that it interacts with, or uh, ERC20s as well? Well, um, so let's... Right, okay, uh, Kyle, I, I'm not, I, I just, let's try and get the definitions of what a PRC-20 and an ERC-20 is. Yeah, no, um, I understand that. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, so, so, so an, ER, an, an ERC-20 is, is, a, is a standard, okay, um, it's, it's an, uh, what does it stand for again, Christ, I'm going to need to look it up, I've let me get the right terminology, because this is being recorded, ERC definition, All right. So I'm imagining it's got Ethereum in the name. Yeah, it does. Ethereum recommended. What is it? Rec right, Ethereum request for comment. Okay, so on ERC20, right? ERC stands for Ethereum request for comment. On ERC20 contract, which let's take for example on ERC20, is an accepted um, standard within EVM contracts. Okay. So, um, there, there are various other ERC standards, um, 404, which is the most recent standard, which is not accepted, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a trial standard, right? PRC20 is a, a definition that the Pulse Chain community have adopted to try and um, effectively have the, the Pulse Chain stand out in some right. way. So, so yeah, what is a PRC20? There is no Pulse Chain request for comment. It doesn't exist, right? So right. P P PRC is not a thing. ERC is a thing, okay? And there are standards yeah, yeah. that have been approved. There are things that have been uh, like verified within the Ethereum Foundation that have went through rigorous testing, that has went through multiple audits, that's been used in a live environment on the blockchain that um, is accepted as being a safe standard. ERC20 is one of those, okay? So, um, to come back to your so maybe, original question. Maybe I can elaborate a little bit on why I asked that. Because uh, I just, honestly, I wasn't sure as far as, like, networks goes, if, it, if it's able to interact with uh, both. But um, I, I ask it because, you know, have you ever used three comms before? By chance? Uh, three comms .io. <laughs> It's, it's, I mean, I've, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, I've, okay. I've, I've seen it. It's, so it's they, cool. It's, it's yeah, really yeah. a cool user experience. And yeah. that's what it really reminds me of, but that's why I love Tetra, because honestly, it was... I like how there's. it's more visual with Tetra, or it will be. Um, uh, well, that's uh, the whole point. That, that's the whole yeah. point. So, to answer so your original so question, exactly, you know, it's democratizing uh, solidity contract development for people that want to build stuff within the realms of the, the tools that we provide, right? Um, yeah. But to, to, answer, to answer your original question, one of the sort of secret sauce parts of what we have with Tetra is the ability to be able to um, look at a smart contract and identify the, the functions that you as a... Um, that, that you have the permission within that contract to execute, whether you own the contract, so if the contract has an admin key, then some functions within the contract are exclusive to you as the owner, or there may be public functions or private functions that um, you as a holder of a token um, have the ability to be able to call or execute. So Tetra will allow you to develop any kind of 
automation that grants you the permissions that you would have in a normal circumstance, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So these, these functions that are available to you as an individual or a contract owner or wh whatever your status is within the blockchain, you will, ha you will have the same granted permissions within Tetra when you build these strategies and these automations. Um, so simply just by your strategy wallet, as we call it, or your, your smart wallet holding the tokens of a, of a particular smart contract, um, you don't actually hold the tokens, but the, the database of the contract knows that that address, which is your smart contract, has the ability to execute these different functions. It, by default, then inherits the ability to be able to do the things that you could do as an individual. So as long as, as long as we um, make the, as long as as long as Stratus can read the contract code in the form of a verified uh, solidity contract, these functions then become available to your automation to do whatever you would do normally, but programmatically in a drag and drop environment that doesn't require you to write a single line of code. Yeah, it's okay. scripting um, if you correlate it to uh, game dev. Hey, Stu, can you hear me all right? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yo, I Hello, How you doing, doing, buddy? Right. So I didn't hey. realize all this was going on. I just got home. Give me about five, six minutes, and I'll be uh, back on to a chat with you guys. Cool, cool. Can I just comment um, on uh, the three commas, commas because... Um, because I'm actively trading, and I've, I've looked into. I mean, three comments is probably the most popular. I think it is the most popular. Uh, it's, a, it's a trading bot that yeah. basically does does. Uh, I mean, you would you know, you would know. I'm just saying this for the benefit of any any other other listeners. But uh, they've got a DCA uh, short bot, they've got a DCA long bot, and uh, grid bots uh, basically. So they're there's the packaging up um, these the different types of bots, but you still have to know market trend and stuff like that. With uh, with strat Stratus and, and some of the well some of the strategies that I'm planning to to, to put forward when it when it's all, all all active to see what the community thinks um, is um, you know you've got sideways markets you've got bear markets you've got bull markets but there's nothing that handles tr trend the first the first thing with three commas is um, you can create a strategy um, to to allow for changes in all market conditions whether it's a correction or a bear bear market or a bull market. That it would, or you could actually strategize so that if the market conditions change, your your positions can change in your portfolio. For example, and another thing too, is that it's opening up all this to DeFi. Like you, you can actually uh, work directly with, you know, um, you know, um, you know, the actual DEXs instead of um, connecting up with Binance and and Bybit and all that sort of stuff. That was just a couple of observations I made from what what I've uh, seen out there. From and three commas is probably the best. What was really cool, so like like I was saying, there's been so many times where I've been like, okay, I'm going to dive in this time. I'll pay the membership. I'm going to dive in and really learn this because there's just so much potential. But then I just get there and it's just so overwhelming because um, I used to yeah. trade a lot as well. But the one thing that I actually did get stuck on or that I really liked was uh, you can trade off of trading view charts. So you can mm -hmm. draw trend lines. And basically, uh, three commas, they would, it would work directly with trading view. So that's why I asked about the Ethereum thing, just because yeah. um, that would be a cool feature, but PRCs aren't, you know, Pulse Chain, there's nothing on trading view yet. I think, um, yeah, so, yeah, not yet, um, but um, soon. But anyway, we'll move on to that right now. But yes, you're right. So these, these indicators on trading view can effectively be exposed. In the form of an API, and um, <clears throat> we're getting really technical now, but it's important to cover this. And I think there's an important point in this that I'd like to get across as well: is, is that these uh, three commas type uh, systems are effectively just for trading. It's it's not they are strategies. Yeah, they are because everybody it's a trading strategy. But you need to think about Tetra in a different light. It's not you can use it to automate your trading, right? And you can come up with your own trading strategies and execute those in a decentralized way. You don't need to give your tokens or coins over to the protocol. You don't need to give them to any kind of centralized entity. You don't need to register a credit card. 
and put a thousand dollars into the thing to then go and execute these centralized bots, which are effectively just running on Amazon Amazon Web Services, right? Um, we're taking it a step further than that. You can still do that kind of stuff, but you cannot with e-commerce, for example, stake tokens or unstake tokens or exactly. uh, get get into a, a yield farm on Pulse X or take your yield that was generated in that yield farm and then go and do something else with it that generates more yield, right? So that's the difference, and you need to understand that although we use the same term, strategy, that's a, that a general term. It's a generic term anyway, right? Um, you're going to be able to strategize the things that you would normally have to do manually on the blockchain in an automated fashion without having to give your tokens over to a centralized entity and program it in a smart contract that you hold the keys to, you know? Mm. So it's we're taking it's security is a really important, of course it is. Um, when you generate your strategy, your DeFi strategy, I'm going to automate my DeFi, do you, you, you may not want anybody to know what your contract is doing. Um, so you may not want to verify and publish it. You may not want to make it available for the rest of the community because you've got such a great idea that I wanted to do this and I think that that's going to be really successful and I know that if a hundred other people do it, they're just going to do my opportunity yes. because I came up with this idea. All right, mm -hmm. so you're custodian of everything that you do. We're just providing the tools that allow you to do it. In DeFi, without having to hand over your coins, it's, we're, we're taking like, like first principles and, and democratizing it in a way that's never been done before. So, next level shit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so, we're getting, so excited, man. Honestly, we're, get, we're, we're getting back to um, web to web three conversations, aren't we? Because like, the, if we're take, taking full advantage of web three and decentralized finance, um, one, yeah, we're, we're uh, 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 Stratus is going to and, and Tetra are going to. And go further into that uh, experimenting in that direction. Uh, we're going to come out with things we never thought of, as you've said a few times before, Stu, as well. I think a few ways to um, really easily understand automation from visual scripting point of view is, let's just say you have a whole bunch of hex stakes and you don't want to remember when they are. Maybe you can program a calendar date to execute an unstake if gas fees are good. Not really an issue on Pulse Chain, but just in general, it would automatically execute that within those parameters that you would script. You could then add an addendum to that to send it to a different wallet. You could have it automatically cross swap that to let's just say coast and send that to um, your fiat off foreign. Um, there's many different ways that you can understand um, automation from the visual scripting point of view without getting into the weeds of the technicalities. Mm -hmm. If you just start at it as an assistant <clears throat> to help you conveniently do the things that you would need to do, just like people now use ChatGPT to do things. That's a good way to look at it as a bedrock. From there, how you evolve um, your uh, cross scripting on different parameters is based on your understanding on how those systems work, which is where you have the public model for the marketplace for something that Neil or Squirrel or someone like myself would write um, is different than what a private person would want to do, such as OPSEC particular um, methods, whether they want to front run a particular thing that they've decided <laughs> to build or just make it bloody convenient, which is vastly handy when you think about, oh, I'm going to do an ICASA um, lockup. And because of my weight on my bag, I know it's 300 days or whatever the, the number is. Well, it's already scripted to take a look at that later in that date because that time parameter of when you made that hex stake for 90 days, it should already be built into the markup of the scripting language that you're building. So it already knows what you're creating and it'll already handle it on the back end. Is that about right, Stu? Pretty much, but there is a there is a middleware within that that generates the contract and that again is, that's kind of part of the secret sauce. So um, oh. we, we do use yeah, I'm maybe saying too much now, you know. So I can maybe say that because it's finished and we're 
ready to launch it once the Omnis contracts are fully released and um, published and verified and uh, the audits are, are out. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's when, when this becomes available, a lot of people are scratching their head and thinking to themselves, well, how is this actually going to work? How are they going to do this? And they're, you know, we've not had a really a great amount of fud in any way whatsoever, but people have been like skeptical about it at various different stages. How is this even achievable? Um, I think when the tools become available, the technical minds will look at it and they will go, damn, I wish I thought of that. And it's going to be too late because, um, you know, I think being first to market is important. And, and because of the amount of time that I know that this is taken to build as well, um, that is that is also going to be prohibitive for a lot of people. So um, when when Stratus and Atlas do become available to the public, the rollout across all the different places that it's going to exist is going to happen so rapidly because I know that people are going to look at it and they're going to say, damn, I wish I thought of that. That is a great idea. And then they're going to realize how, how it's implemented um, and then they're going to realise how difficult it is, and then they're just going to say, "Well, we'll just use Stratus." Yeah, 